Hi everyone and welcome back to On The Road With Iona. Today is another little range session. I thought why not get the camera on and a little fly on the wall action of what I'm going to work on on the driving range today and probably one of the most beautiful driving ranges in the world. We are in the Swiss Alps in Grand Sorcière and a little later on we're going to go out and play on the golf course but for now I've been struggling with my driver a little bit so I want to come down to the range and actually just do a little bit of work on my driver and I thought that I would get the camera on and we could just share with you how I go about trying to improve things with my driver because you know when you feel like I'm not getting along with this club let's say it's your three wood or your driver or your putter how do you then go about identifying what's the problem how can I improve it and then take it back to the golf course and feel better this is a, an episode that's sharing with you kind of how I approach that as I say I've not been hitting my driver very well it isn't about what you should be working on in your driver because I'm not sure what's happening with your driver you might be flushing it for all I know or you might feel like you need you need to work on one aspect in particular I feel like my rhythm has fallen off and it's easy to get too quick with the driver that's definitely what I feel I'm doing so today I'm going to do a little bit of work on my tempo my rhythm I'm going to get my Freddie Couples hat on and try and see if I can find it again because when I hit my driver well I love that club in the bag so fingers crossed we can make some progress today and I look forward to sharing with you how I go about that so the end of the day I feel like I'm struggling with my rhythm and what I mean by that is I feel like because it's the longest club in the bag you need the longest swing you need the the longest arc and comparing like the driver swing to the pitching wedge swing for example it's much shorter the pitching wedge swing this is a long club this is probably 34 and a half inches long so you need to give yourself time at the top of the backswing and what I can do sometimes is lift my hands get a bit steep and quick and I haven't given myself time just to complete the backswing. So I need to just kind of slow things down a little bit. And I've got just the drill that's gonna help me do that. But before I get to the big dog, I need to warm up. So I'm gonna start at the bottom of my bag and just hit a few wedges. So I'm gonna lay out six balls. I've got my, uh, I've got my love wedge in my hand. And I'm really just thinking about loosening up. It's beautiful temperature here today, which helps. I'm not really like trying to, I'm eyeballing targets because it's always good to work towards a target. I'm just really trying to loosen my body up. It's so fun, isn't it? When you find a little window in your life to work on your, your golf game. And it's even better when you get to come to a place like this. It's just absolutely stunning. I'm, one thing like overall in my golf swing that I'm kind of feeling right now bottom of the bag all the way up is this feeling of just letting my arms fall in front of my body a lot of why I got injured was this idea of like holding on to this onto the club and it's just such a difficult position to play good golf from so I try to just feel like I'm letting the the club like just swing in front of my body and it's a really wonderful feeling So I'm just getting a little bit looser. I'm gonna just get my pitching wedge out. So I've got my pitching wedge in my hand now and I'm just gonna start working, working the tempo up a little bit, just feeling the same thing. I'm gonna work loosely to a target, but. I might just pick a few targets. I'm gonna go down here now. Right, so I've hit some wedges now. I definitely need to hit a few seven irons because just even to go from the pitching wedge up to the driver, it's a, it's a big jump. So I'm just slowly giving myself, I'm gonna hit three seven irons, not many. I'm gonna give myself a chance just to feel that, the shaft getting a little bit longer and the timing therefore, the tempo of my golf swing, it has to change. I'm gonna get three balls out now. I've worked a little bit with the seven iron kind of mid-range in the bag. 
Now I'm gonna get my five wood out. I love this club. Obviously, you've got you've got wood swings, you've got iron swings, you've got wedge swings. There's lots of different swings within the game of golf. Unfortunately, when you are learning golf and you've learned how to hit a seven iron, someone puts a driver in your hand or even a five wood and suddenly you've got to swing it differently. And it's like, ah, oh, really? If only it was all just the same. As the club gets longer, um, the tempo of the swing has to reflect that and also the width of the swing changes as well. I watched a great video a while ago that spoke about the iron swing being, you know, the way that the iron swing's kind of short and it's tight to the body, it's much more connected to the body, whereas the wood swing, there's this feeling of, I don't know, it's just like sort of a bit wider and a bit looser as you swing. Perfect. The angle of attack gets shallower with the woods as well. So start to work the club more around your body rather than an up and down. I've worked with coaches through the years, you know, that have helped me to improve all aspects of my game. And there's just been certain things that have helped, like stuck in my mind. I'm not sure, you know, if they're the, tech, the sort of technical approach to teaching somebody how to hit woods, you know, probably in a textbook somewhere, there's, there's a specific way of going about it. But you know, all I know is from my experience, what, what has helped me to play better with my woods and certainly feeling like I give myself more time. You don't rush anything with the woods, you know, let the club come around your body and you don't need to hit down on it so much. You're feeling like it's, you're sweeping the club off the surface. Absolutely love this club. My golf swing feels too quick right now, so I'm, I, I'm really looking forward to this session and trying to get the tempo right. And now it's time to get the big dog out. So my body feels warm. I've hit, you know, at least 20 balls, just loosening up, working my way from the bottom of the bag all the way up to the driver. And now I'm gonna go about setting about my drill. So I'm gonna lay out little piles of three balls because I always think in golf, it's good to reset. I used to get in trouble from one of my coaches, Hugh. He used to say, you know, you're just dragging and hitting, I own a dragging and hitting. You're not resetting, because out on the golf course, you, you only get one shot at each shot. The beauty of having little piles of three is you get your first ball, just like out on the golf course, and you get two extra, so that's kind of nice. Then you reset, you get the first ball again, get the two extra. So you're being nice to yourself, but you're making sure that you've got that feeling of the first one at least a few times in your session. Otherwise, if you just keep dragging and hitting, then ultimately you only get that feeling once and it's the first ball that you hit at the start of the session. I've got five sets of three balls. The drill I'm gonna do is to do with the takeaway because what happens in the takeaway with the driver is very often it influences what happens in the rest of the swing. And actually, I know that Nelly Corder works on this drill quite a lot. So the tee is in the ground. And I'm gonna get a ball behind there. But most importantly, as you will have seen in my previous video, I'm gonna set up my station. This is gonna help me to make sure that my alignment and that my ball position doesn't get sloppy. And these are things you can always work on in any session. It doesn't matter what you're working on, you should really make sure that you've set up your alignment correctly. So I'm gonna go down to that red circle at the bottom with my driver. So I'm gonna use the first stick to make sure that that's where that is aiming. So I've created train tracks and now I know that if I come in here and my feet, my knees, my hips, my shoulders are parallel to this line, then I'm, I've got a good chance that I'm aiming in the right direction. So I know that's right now, I'm gonna pick this one up and I can use this for the ball position. So when you're hitting your driver, the ball should be forward of center, you know, towards the inside of your left foot. And that's gonna really help me to make sure I've got those two things absolutely spot on. You've got your alignment and you've got your ball position and there's not really any excuse for getting those things wrong. The way this drill works is you put another ball behind the ball you're going to hit and you have to take the club away without whooshing the ball out of sight so this ball shouldn't travel more than 
six or seven feet. So as I take it away, I'm rolling the ball away. I know that if my tempo is too quick, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna wish the ball away and it's gonna be right out of sight. So it's just a little visual and a kind of a little aid that's gonna help me to get that really smooth takeaway and hopefully help me to get better tempo in my golf swing. Nice. So you get the gist, that's the drill. Let's see how I go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna work my way through this first set of three. It's already just like in one swing is so much better. Oh, why can I not do that on the golf course? All the time. So as you can see, like Nelly Cord is doing it with an iron. And you can do it with the, with the iron as well. But you can do it with every club in the bag and, and she's using it here. You see she's got her alignment stick down pros always working on their alignment and she's just using one other ball to roll it away smoothly and that sets the tempo for her whole swing. So I'm stealing this one from Nelly and she's called it the old trusty ball drill. As before in my other session you see I've got my little eye range here and I'm going to I'm going to clip it onto my golf bag this time because I don't have a bench like we did the last time. I'm just going to get my golf bag side on and I'm going to clip it on. make sure that it's like down the line so I can just keep an eye on how things are because remember from the last video my posture was just really sloppy so I'm just going to magnet that on I'm going to loosen that again I should bring it around to this side and then from there I can just make sure I get it in the right position such a beautiful backdrop the best driving range I think I've ever been to in terms of the scenery. Okay, that looks great now. So I'm recording down the line so I can actually keep an eye on basic things like my posture. It's something I'm always looking out for because I can get really rounded in my top back and what that does is it means that I don't have as much space in front of my body to let the club drop. When I set my posture and I make sure that I feel like, you know, my shoulders are stacked I am allowing the club, there's so much more space in front of my body all of a sudden to let the club work through. It can be hard work, you know, when you're tired. I've had a long week of work and I feel quite tired today. But you can just, you know, stand up and get lazy. You've got to really take the time to set the shoulders back and feel like you're creating space for the club to work in front, in, in front of the body. These balls have got a little bit of dust on them, which is quite useful. What a lot of people use is like athlete's foot spray. It's like a talcum powder spray. You can like spray it on the face of your, your driver. And it's, it's really useful to see how close to the middle you're hitting it or how consistently out the middle you're hitting it. I'm just gonna like wipe that down every time. And actually because there's a bit of dust on these balls, I can, I can see how close to the middle I'm managing to hit my driver. Right. And just that, that little, little bit smoother in the takeaway, it is incredible the way that affects the rest of the golf swing. It really is. I remember when I was learning to play golf and in the first year I used to get frustrated because my coach Christian Baker used to spend, we used to spend so much time working on the takeaway and I thought, ah, you know, I'm ready to like move on to the good stuff, you know. And actually I look back now and I, I, I'm really grateful for how long we did spend working on the first foot of the golf swing because it so often, it's just, just, just so important. Oh, by the way, that one came a bit high off the club face. So 
can see it's come off quite high. Not as, not as central as I'd like. I'll give that a little clean. We'll go again. Right, so I've worked my way through that five sets of three and I'm on to my last ball. Perfect. It's amazing how much more time I feel I have in the golf swing. I don't have to rush anything. But that is my five sets of three complete. I'm gonna take a little rest now before I remove the drill and I just start hitting my driver freer, working to the same target but taking away the ball. And I'm gonna do five sets of three with no drill and see how far I go. Two, three, two, three. Five sets of three now, I've still got my station. I'm gonna work to the same target. I am gonna do four sets of three feeling my, my rhythm and my tempo, really consciously trying to work on that takeaway without the drill. And I'm gonna leave the last set of three where I'm gonna take the station away and I'm gonna to work to three different targets to finish just to see if I can move my body around and set up and still manage to maintain that same feeling. So let's go. Again, I just wanna say that this is, this is something that I'm working on in my game. It might not be relevant to your game at the moment. You might have a beautiful tempo and need to work on something else, but it's just about how I go about trying to implement change in my golf swing and hopefully the idea is improvement that's what I want I want to go away from a session on the range if I've got a rare half an hour and think yes I definitely know I've improved it's perfect and I had to consciously think there I had to imagine that the ball was there otherwise I know I would have just yoinked the club away I'm just going to take another film on my phone, this last ball in this first set, and just check that my posture is okay. So much better, isn't it? It's like unbelievable how that's helped me. Okay, so I'm on to my last ball of the fourth set. So this is the last set where I get to use the alignment sticks to help me. And I'm not going to lie, I'm feeling pretty good by this stage. The tee height's still a wee bit high, but hitting out to the Matterhorn could be worse, eh? So, I've got three balls left in my session. And I'm going to take away the alignment sticks now. I'm going to freewheel it. And I'm going to pick three different targets down at the bottom of the range. And there's these, um, something that can be really good on driving ranges if you're, apart from the fact I've got the Weisshorn, the Matterhorn and other beautiful mountains in the Alps to aim at, you can pick uh, the towers as really good alignment points. You get them in most driving ranges and it, they can be really, really useful. So try and pick something in the distance and I've got three more bites at the cherry before I call it quits on this, on this session and, and go and do a little bit of putting. One thing that's really interesting when you have been using alignment sticks is just how exposed you feel when you go in without them. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna start by aiming down the right hand side to this middle pylon of those three. And when you step in, you have to work so much harder to align yourself up because you've had something doing it for you the whole time. I've picked a spot in front. Right on it. You. So two more. This time I'm going to go down the left to that middle pylon of the last three on the left hand side. Similar to where I was aiming before to be honest but a little bit left of it. It's a little bit right but it's okay. Felt like I got through that nicely. When you give yourself the time, it's like you can actually, you know, pick up a bit of speed. You think that if you go slow, then it'll lead to a slow speed. But actually, if you, you whip the club away, you've, you've already used the fastest point of the swing. Think about 
club just naturally swinging. The fastest point is the low point. You know, it picks up speed at the bottom of the arc. So you're just trying to give the club a chance of doing what it wants to naturally. Okay, last one. I'm gonna hit right out there to the vice horn on the top of that mountain. Amazing. So that's it. I am sweaty, I'm hot, and I feel like I've worked really hard there. I've hit no more than 50 balls maximum, probably 45 balls once again, driver. I'm ready for a nice drink and then I'm gonna go and do some putting. I do really hope that this has been helpful for you, just to have a little fly on the wall insight and how I'm working on my driver, that tempo, that rhythm. More work to be done, no doubt about it, but I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next video.